Hi, this is Melissa Limeberry with another edition of Stupid Politics. I'm very excited today. Um, I have a great guest, John Hostetler, Honorable John. Am I saying your last name right? Hostetler. Yes. I have not mispronounced. I've mispronounced it a couple times, been corrected. But he has been so gracious to come on the show, and I'm gonna let him tell us a little bit about what he's doing politically, and then we're gonna get started as we don't have a lot of time, and I have a lot to get in. Well, Melissa, I'm running for the United States Senate. I previously served in the House of Representatives from 1995 to 2007, representing the 8th District of Indiana, which uh, originally was 13 counties in southwest Indiana, and ultimately grew to 18 counties in southwest and west central Indiana, when, um, after the census of 2000 resulted in Indiana losing a seat in the United States House of Representatives. And so, um, after the elections in 2006, uh, I was defeated for a seventh term and went back home to Blairsville, Indiana, and was uh, very content in that life. Then Barack Obama got elected in 2008, and it was very reminiscent to me of 1994, uh, when a very liberal uh, president came to power and, and, and uh, was talking about reforming health care to the extent that he meant reforming health care was the federal government taking it over. Oh, we uh, like that bill they just exactly, had. <laughs> just like that. And expanding the government in all ways, resulting in trillions of dollars of debt, trillions of dollars of annual deficits. And so in early December of uh, last year, I announced my intention to run for the United States Senate against Evan Bott. He's since dropped out, which makes the Republican primary all the more interesting and important. Absolutely, huh? especially with the Tea Party movement, Campaign for Liberty movement, so many things going on, people upset. Very, very important race, and there are five candidates yes. um, running, and I'm not, I don't even got all the names, so we won't get into that because I just have so much. Um, you did write a book. You were on my show before. I wasn't here. You wrote a book. I did read it, but we're not going to talk about that, but I did want to say, and the wonderful public library has two copies of it, Nothing for the Nation. It's about the Iraq War. If you want to say a quick, brief synopsis it's, of it. It's about the run-up to the Iraq War. Uh, of the vote uh, that we had in the House of Representatives, and then what I learned after the vote, after we learned collectively that there was not a program of weapons of mass destruction in Iraq for years prior to even the invasion. So it talks about my experiences before the vote, during the What vote. you were thinking. Yes, and, and uh, as well as what I learned afterwards as to the true motivations for uh, for the people who, who marketed the idea of going to war in Iraq. Okay, and that leads me into the question of your voting record, because that's what we have to judge you by um, as you're running for Senate. You voted against the Iraq War. Yes, one of six Republicans in the House to vote against the Iraq War. One of six. So you're not afraid of the, standing up to the party. Exactly. And which is something that we really want right now. Is So if you're you're not always standing there, whatever they want. That's that's great to hear. Um, you also voted against um, Medicaid, Medicare. Right. <laughs> I did it anyway. Yeah, a, Medicare Part D. Part D, the creation of Medicare Part D, the prescription drug benefit that expanded Medicare and was the largest expansion of entitlements in general since the creation of Medicare. Uh, and unfortunately, Republicans did that in 2003. And the president, the Republican president, George W. Bush, wanted to sign that into law, and he did. Uh, and you were only a few votes out of that there one, was, too. There was about 23 or 24 of us that voted against the Medicare uh, expansion with the prescription drug benefit. Uh, it is When it was passed, uh, it was projected to never be funded out of current dollars. So right off the top, this is a, this is a, a plan, this is a program that is perpetually paid for out of borrowed revenues. And then there's the obvious constitutional issues as well. But, but, Absolutely. But speaking, speaking to the, the issue of swimming in red ink, as we're concerned about, especially these days, Medicare Part D uh, just added to that long before uh, Obamacare was even a consideration. And just added more entitlement programs. That's and right. it's not even whether you want. I always talk about people always think that means you must be against it. It's not that. It's we can't afford it. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. And that's where we need to go to charities and there's other alternatives and they don't tell you those things unless you delve a little deeper, which is sad. That There's other ways to get people the things they need. They make it seem like only government can solve our problems. It, that's, that's exactly right. And it's not the case. No, because I'm a big girl. I, I can solve most of my problems. I don't need you to help me with my boyfriend or anything else, so I don't need you with 
most things. Mm -hmm. I need to, you know, secure my borders. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. It's kind of what James Protect said. my private property. That's right. Exactly. You know, I'm a pretty simple girl. I don't need you to be in my house doing things. Sure. Okay, is there any other boats that you want to talk about before I get into the boats that I don't like and we need to clear up some things that you are that you are happy with. I heard that you are against the Department of Education. Uh, well, I was going to elaborate on that more specifically. In 2001, President Bush uh, sent uh, a, a, a proposal to create a new program in the Federal Department of Education called No Child Left Behind. And Which while, we now have. We, we do. And uh, uh, while it is laudable to uh, call for uh, more accountability in the educational system, it's simply not a, uh, an obligation of the federal government. And I voted against No Child Left Behind because it was uh, it was even what was touted as a conservative response and solution for uh, our education system woes. But this should not come from the federal government. Uh, even in 2001, Republicans and and some so-called conservatives were thinking we need to create more accountability. We need to improve our education system, which is all true. It's just not the role of the federal government. These are things, and, and so that people don't think you're against education, these are things that should be left to people in their states, in their local communities. Because we're sending our federal dollars, as I keep telling everybody, we send our federal dollars to this agency, and then they send us back a portion. Exactly. They have to take their salaries and, That's you know. Right. That's right. The, the Tenth Amendment is very clear when it says the power is not delegated uh, to the United States by the Constitution or prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. And so, since education is not one of those powers delegated to the United States by the Constitution, it's found nowhere in the United States Constitution, it is reserved, reserved to the states. And plus, we can handle it. We're not the same as California. That's right. We absolutely, we were having so many problems with schools, we could go on and on about that because we're having budget. And part of the problem is because